You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by MyAx, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. MyAx is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra-low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody, that music means it is time once again for Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. My name is Mark Longo from TheOptionsInsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever-compelling, at least we tend to think so around these parts, but hey, we're not biased at all, Options Insider Radio Network. Remind me, of course, if you like what you hear, this show, anything else we do on the network, I do keep rating and reviewing. You can rate and review wherever you want on your platform of choice, on this show, on the full network, on the app store where you get our content, wherever you get our content, keep rating and reviewing. It does help all the new folks continue to discover the content. And of course, it's our final program here for our broadcast week for all you on-demand folks. If you don't want your week to end with volatility views, you want to get options oddities, you want to get great pro Q&As like the session we did earlier this week with Tony Saliba, you want to get live access to this and all the other shows that we do, you want, of course... Put your name in the hat for the awesome pro trading crate giveaways that the Rock Lobster is so jealous of and a whole bunch more. You know where to go to begin that journey to the dark side. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to learn more. And let's see who we've got joining us on the program today. I did besmirch him, so let's at least give him pride of place coming on the show he is the rockingest of lobsters, Mr. Andrew Gibanazzi from OptionPit.com. Mr. G, welcome back to Volatility View, sir. It is it is nice to be here, but I'm used to the besmirching. Your listeners are used to the besmirching, but that is why I am constantly riding the Umbridge train. Because that's just the way it is. That's why the folks tune in. They like a good besmirching to start the show. They, they <laughs> and also joining us, from Maine adjacent today, holding down the Mayax hot seat from the other northern volatility mecca known as New Hampshire, we are joined once again by Mr. Matt Ambertson, the founder over there at ORATS, a.k.a. Options Research and Technology Services. Mr. Matt, welcome back to Volatility View, sir. It has been too long. It has, and I think we all feel bad for Andrew, and, and, and because of that, I have made a major purchase Donation, ORATS hats, 
that have been so popular. <laughs> so we're going to have to get Andrew a hat, uh, and that'll help. With I'm going to have to send one of those hats to Andrew now. There we go. Just to calm him down, talk him off the ledge from his besmirchment. Maybe I'll send him a sweet, sweet Orats hat as we keep on rolling right on into the volatility review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the Volatility Review. All right, everybody, welcome to the Volatility Review, the portion of the show where we do just that. We break down the week that was and indeed still is from a volatile trading and trending and analysis and unusual activity, all sorts of fun perspectives. And coming into today's show, it's a bit of a surprising turnaround out there because most of the news in the after hours from an earnings perspective was pretty dire. Most of the big names popping off. Of course, we had Meta earlier this week, Amazon screwing the pooch last night as well. It, it didn't look that great, <laughs> and yet the markets are just shrugging it off and then some. Most of all the major indices up over 2% right now. The S&P up about 2.06%. The Dow up about 2.3%. NASDAQ closing in on 2.4% to the upside. So they are feeling their oats today, which, again, a little bit surprising given the fact that we had uh, kind of a rough week <laughs> on the earnings front. We'll get into all that earnings goodness in a little bit. Listeners, don't worry. There's a reason why Mr. Matt is joining us. It is that time of year, listeners. Uh, But before we get into that, let's run down all the madness going on out there. Like we said, a surprising green resurgence out there in the market today means most of our vol friends taking a bit of a hiatus today. Uh, Spikes down nearly three points when we kicked off the show. 27 and a half down about two and three quarters points from where it was this time last week. VIX Cash, 26 and a quarter. Man, I could have used this level about a week ago. (laughs) It's down three and a quarter points (laughs) from where it was uh, this time last week. Uh, VVIX down to a 78. That's pretty anemic. Let me give you a frame of reference, listeners. It used to be in the pre-pandemic days, in the the normal times, let's call them, when VVIX, the vol of vol, got down to about a 75 you knew it probably wasn't going to hang out there for very long. It probably was going to rebound north of that pretty soon. That was kind of the practical lower end floor for the vol of vol. Now, obviously, theoretically, it can get lower. But practically, what we would usually see is it gets down to about the mid-70s. It would usually bounce from there. Uh, so now we're in this post-pandemic era. Who knows what the new normal is? But 78 in this environment, it's pretty low for vol of vol. I'm just throwing it out there. Down eight points from where it was this time last week. Not to be outdone, our other friend on the Vol of Vol front, the V-Spikes, a.k.a. the Viking, down to about a 97. That's down eight points as well. So both V-Vix and V-Spikes moving in lockstep this week. If you're wondering, the low for V-Spikes was 89 and a half. That was back on July 29th. So we are within spitting distance of the all-time low for V-Spikes as well. So that's a heck of a lot of Vol of Vol just evaporating from the marketplace over the course of the past week. So a lot to unpack. Let's go out to the Myax hot seat first. Mr. Matt, sir, what is lighting up your tape in a somewhat surprising vol week, sir? Yeah, I mean, uh, Meta let let us down, and and Kramer got on there and and had a tear and and, and apologized. I mean, I I think that's what we should be doing if you come in last place in the VIX picking. (laughs) Tearful apologies. There you go. Have an emotional apology for your 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 VIX pick. So I, you know, I, I, it was interesting to see that. Uh, you know, I went a little bullish earlier. We have, we have our trading club and at Orets, as as you well know. Uh, everything looks good except for Contango. So the vol, uh, the implied volatility, I look at uh, that has fallen, broken down from the uptrend that that started way back in mid August. So finally broke that uh, about a week ago. Uh, the, these forward relationships, those broke to the upside. So everything was looking good. But Contango, I said, what is going on with Contango? Well, what's going on with Contango 
are, is this election coming up? The midterms are uh, are popping into the uh, the monthly expirations. Uh, the, what is it? The eighth uh, is the the midterm. So the ninth, uh, the expirations on the ninth have uh, higher vol. Uh, we have this method for estimating what the move is going to be on the, uh, you know, we use it for earnings, but we also could use it for events. So it was 2.9. Now it's 2.4. So 2.4% is the estimated move on the, uh, on the midterms, but it just seems like this market uh, wants to go higher, wants to shrug off everything, you know, er earnings, wants to shrug off what's going on in Ukraine uh who cares about nuclear weapons who cares about bad earnings let's let's rally this thing is 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 what it feels like um uh, and you know balls coming down you know it looks like uh you know my predictions before were you know we're in a bear market uh but it's a wide slow moving bear market uh with these interest rates up i, I think vix will stay higher than normal not just because of the midterms, but because of the interest rate vol is still very high. Uh, is it going to be a 0.75, 1.25 raise in November? Uh, what's going to happen in December? Uh, are they going to talk pivot? There's a lot of uh, a lot of questions out there. So we're going to have a higher than normal uh, VIX at least. Uh, and uh, but I think overall, as I've mentioned before, this. And when you're raising uh, interest rates this quickly, it's going to cut into earnings, you know, not uh, immediately, but it, it usually takes 10 to 14 months, so a year, uh, and it starts to hurt earnings. So we're going to have uh, earnings per share come down, I think, from, what is it, 211 for this for the S&P, you know, probably, probably come down 5 to 10%. So that's going to, that's where I, my predictions of like 3,000 um you know, so I, it could hit 4,000, but I think it's going to hit 3,000 before 5,000. Uh, so that's what I'm seeing out there. I know it's a lot, Mark, but there's a lot going on. There is a lot going on. And you're right. Who cares about uh, crappy earnings, the potential for looming conflicts overseas? Who cares about any of that, Matt? We got to buy them stocks, right? <laughs> Get in while the getting is good out there. Yeah. Massive rush to the upside out there. You know who's always reliable to throw a dose of cold water? on some irrational exuberance <laughs> it's the rock lobster himself you could argue today might be a, a suitable day for such things mr rock lobster what what cold water you got in store for us today well i am washing the cold water run in currently and it does look chilly it's amazing what a month will do uh a month ago you know late september it was still it, it wasn't a you know you could still jump in but now it's it's a little frosty. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with Matt on the contango. That's the you have two events. You know, you have uh, the November 2nd, the Fed speaks. And on November 11th, the uh, election comes. And, uh, you know, if you're looking at polling, which I don't know, I don't think anybody believes anymore. It's actually hard to believe just about anything on the news anymore. I don't care who says it. I don't believe anything anymore at all because uh, they just come back six months later and said, hey, oh, well, well maybe we were wrong. <laughs> um, but uh, besides that, uh, that that grumpy piece of cold water uh, there, uh, my guess would be that we would have a little bit more of a divided Congress. Historically, a divided Congress, as long as I've been doing this, is generally better for stocks because politicians can do less. <laughs> so anytime they can do less, because we saw what happened in the last two years when they did more, uh, they did poorly when they, we kind of gave them the, uh, they, let's say they took the gauntlet and ran with it and they did not run in a very good direction, mostly in circles. Um, and at this point, uh, I would guess, um, that we would have, uh, we would end up with some kind of divided Congress. Who knows who wins? And to be honest, I have a hard time caring really at this point. Um, but as long as one party is arguing with the other, we all seem to be better off. Um, and, and that would slow down, my guess. If spending would slow down. All these other things would slow down. Uh, what I do find is, is that um, 
uh, interest rates are going up and uh, mortgages are 7%. And we managed to have a pretty good housing crisis um, when interest rates were 7% the last time. Um, so, uh, or we had a great financial crisis, right? So I think, uh, I think banks are a little smarter on how they lend. I think the biggest problem is, you know, what's the world going to do with all the zero, the zero rate paper that they own that is not going to produce any returns for the next guy jillion years, um, like pension funds and stuff like that. But somehow that is as bad as that, you know, uh, was apparently it's, it's somehow calmed down. Um, and I think a divided Congress would put some sort of a break on the fiscal exuberance of uh, the current member of the White House. Uh, not that the former did a whole lot better, by the way, or the one before that or the one before that, to be quite honest. So uh, I think the only thing that will stop spending in Congress is the fact that they're going to pay $750 billion a year, billion dollars a year in interest payments. Um, that's a pretty big number. I, I think uh, when I was a youth, I remember the whole budget was only <laughs> somewhere around there. And now it's just the interest on the debt. So I, I think that might put a natural break on uh, the ridiculous amount of spending over the last 10 years. Um, and uh, the Fed is still up to QT from what I can see. So Will things slow down a little? Probably. Will we stop seeing the you know the four percent up moves in uh, SPX? Um, <laughs> until the Fed is kind of out of the picture, I'm not taking anything off the table uh, from that view. But I, I agree with Matt. The contango and the curve is still there's two big events coming, and um, and we still have a relatively high realized volume in the market. I think the 30-day average is like 25 or 26%, which is pretty high close to close. Um, this year, from a realized vol point of view, is, I mean, except for the great financial crisis, you know, and that, and we'll just call it the very short period of the COVID. I think this is one of, I would like to hear Dr. Vixer, I know Matt has statistics, but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess this is in the last 20 years, besides a great financial crisis year, might be the highest realized vault uh, for this long, is, would be my guess. Um, if it's not number two, it's number three. Because uh, I'm looking at some of the numbers here, and it, it's, it's pretty darn high. So let's see here. We're coming in. 60-day vol is 24%. That's zone four for, a month, for two months on average. So we've stayed in the highest quartile of all for two straight months on average, which is hugely, hugely, hugely high. Um, and I agree with Matt. Is there anything that's going to make that go away? Um, and usually from a vol point of view, you know, you were trading in a pit. The only way you take vol down is when something changes. When, when you can say, hey, you know, we're going to be less volatile than we were before. Um, and I have to say, I can't see that. The only thing that would help that to some degree, again, I'd say divided Congress, number one, you know, that might be less aid to Ukraine, maybe, which might get that war thing over at some point. You know, Putin could die. Sorry, I don't wish anybody to die, but, you know, it really hasn't helped matters. Um, so there, something could happen, right, that would slow the ball down. Um the only other thing that could slow volatility down is the fact that we have higher rates and they're going to be here for a while. Um, I don't think anybody doubts that uh, rates are going to stay up here because they need to be. Um, you know, the governments can't stop, can't keep buying forever. It did, it did generate inflation. People will argue about how much it generated, how much is due to government spending. My guess is a big chunk of it. Um, and it just finally caught up. Right? I just, uh, economics, I believe, is an imperfect science. So you can have the theory, but the reality takes a while sometimes to sort of uh, work its way into the system. So I, I think that's what we have. Um, we have VIX trading at around a 26, and it's hugely fair. <laughs> it might even be cheap, to be quite honest. Um, so would I expect us to have substantially less vol after the midterms? I'm not going to say substantially, uh, but unless something really, I would say at this point, we have another shoe to drop, something that's terrible, awful, whatever. 
we've probably seen the bottom in stock prices short term. Um, and uh, I mean, I would expect volatility start to moderate somewhat, but it's still 2022, so there's no guarantees. Until it's 2023, I'm going to say we could we could stay in uh, a zone four realized vol <laughs> until the end of the year, and that would be uh, uh, and and that would and that would not surprise me in the least. Let's get on out to some of our other vol metrics, and you know what? It is that time of year, listeners. I mentioned at the top of the show, we are in it. It's nice to have single names buffeting the market again, as opposed to the sometimes ridiculous macro trends that can move this market hither and yon, seemingly on a whim, even though you can maybe argue that that's what's going on out there today as well. But luckily, we got the guy who crunches all the numbers for us over there at Orats, the keeper of the earnings data. And man, it's another banger week out here, listeners, for earnings volatility. Let's give you just give you a flavor of what was popping off this week. We had on Tuesday, we had GM, Coke, GE, 3M, Microsoft, Alphabet, Visa, Chipotle, and Spotify. Wednesday, we had Boeing, so our friends across the street until they move. <laughs> uh, Kraft Heinz, Harley, Ford, O'Reilly Auto Parts yesterday, Mickey D's, Caterpillar, Amazon, really kind of screwing the pooch, but apparently the market doesn't care. Uh, Apple, Merck, Intel, T-Mobile, Southwest Airlines. Today, we had Exxon, Chevron just blowing the doors off of it. Record profits today. So that obviously helping the market a bit. But who's surprised by record profits in the oil companies right now? <laughs> Either way, weird stuff afoot. Luckily, we got Mr. Matt to parse it for us. Mr. Matt, crazy start to the season. We had Meta just getting annihilated earlier this week off pretty terrible outlook. We also had some other big names popping off. We have a crazy season. As I'm looking at the numbers right now, Mr. Matt, and these are obviously very early numbers. They will change. But the earnings season report also hanging out at a comparatively insane 150%. Week two right now hanging out at 208%. I've never seen a week that crazy. Granted, only 87 names reporting. But still, a lot of madness at play here, Mr. Matt. Make some sense of it for us. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty, uh, pretty crazy earnings season. Um, you know, if you take out that uh, week two, you know, week week three, we're already at a 116 percent. That meaning uh, straddle owners are up 16 percent on the, on their straddles around earnings. So that's a, that's already a pretty good one. Um, and you know, with Meta coming out um, with their huge move, they were they were tenth that day. There were ten other ones, ten other names that moved more than than Meta. Um, and, uh, you know, some, some, some decent names there. So, uh, you know, there are a lot of, it's happening to a lot of firms. They're, 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 they're moving much more than, um, than expected. Um, we did predict this Mark, uh, we, we, you know, especially with interest rates changing, um, we, we were talking, uh, maybe even back in August about how, uh, you know, any outlook, uh, any small change in current earnings, you know, that was going to uh, be a canary in a coal mine for what I think is coming up, which is going to be, you know, much worse earnings. But, you know, they're trying to read the tea leaves right now. And it's and it's showing there's uh, they're, they're pushing these these stocks all over, all over the place. Uh, you know, as you know, we we create that uh, earnings season report that's, uh, you know, much higher. Um, we create these, you know, every day we come out with the results, um, and that's where we sort these, uh, th these results, uh, with, with Meta and even Shopify with big, big moves, Apple, uh, e even though, uh, it, it didn't go down, it went up, but it, it went up in a big way, much bigger than expected. And of course you mentioned Amazon, uh, Amazon was down, uh, you know, quite a bit more, 35% more than expected. So those, those. Uh, those traders probably made something like 35%. So that's a, you know, th these are some big names making some big moves. Um, again, I think that, uh, you know, the the vol isn't being really respected, um, meaning, uh, you know, they're not, the actual vols aren't keeping up uh, with the actual moves. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I, I still think people are, 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 are not really uh, uh, 
into this, uh, you know, how, how much, how different it's going to be, I think, with, you know, a new interest rate regime um, and, and starting to see these bigger firms move. I'm, I'm, you know, w- w- what we see in the earnings season is that week one's usually a dud, week two is a little more, week three is more, still week four is the most, uh, meaning movement versus ex- expectations. I shudder to think what's going to happen next week, Mark. I think we're going to have some some pretty big movement. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's stay tuned, get your, uh, get your seatbelt on and, and, uh, and wow, it's going to be a big one next week, Mark. Yeah. I've, I've often joked the market just doesn't like it when Apple is red, it, it struggles mightily to push it green and man, they are, they are pushing it green today up over 12 handles right now, eight and a third percent closing in on 157. It touched 157 briefly this morning has retreated off it a little bit now. This is its best day since uh, the massive rallies in the early days of the pandemic back in 2020. So just insane rally for Apple, which the initial blush after the earnings, it wasn't that great. So it was kind of interesting to see how the turnaround. Of course, that's what happens with earnings all the time. People struggle to digest it. I remember it well in the early days out there trading in Intel, watching the stock whip all over the place in the after hours as soon as the announcement was made as people struggled to digest the numbers. Of course, uh, our friend uh, Amazon, it's not enough to lift Amazon out of their doldrums. Uh, They're still off pretty much eight and a quarter percent, (laughs) even though they have rallied a little bit off their lows of 97 and two thirds this morning. They're trading 101 and about 101.90 now. So they have bounced off that. But this massive uptrend, not enough to reverse the fortunes for Amazon. Interesting time now. We have Meta and Amazon both screwing the pooch and now both hanging out. At pretty much $100, 101 for Amazon, 99 for Meta. Which would you rather have right now, listeners, Amazon or Meta going forward? Maybe that might be an interesting question of the week. <laughs> we'll have to mull that over. Maybe that'll. Maybe we'll put that to you folks out there uh, next week as we get on into the vol space a little more. Uh, Matt mentioned the Contango out there. That's something to keep an eye on. Obviously, uh, the vol surface uh, coming, crashing back to earth yet again this week. When we kicked off the show, we had that front no future down over three handles from where it was last week, down about 3.3 points. Man, Mr. Rock Lobster, this would have looked really good for me last week. (laughs) These down 2.7 points, so they are crushing that front end of that term structure. Once again, you cannot find anything all the way out to June. There's nothing over 30 left. On the term structure, listeners, the highest we get is about a 2845. That's out in April of next year. So intriguing stuff afoot. Hey, Mr. Rock Lobster, are you enjoying that uh, downside leg of your strangle that I mocked for you last week? Because it seems like it's working out now. And then B, what else is lighting up your tape out there in the ball surface this week? Yeah, I like I said, I closed some puts yesterday. Uh, which I'm regretting a little bit, of course, because hindsight's 2020. But the puts I do own, I'm enjoying today still. Um, so, <laughs> I uh, the real question is is how much below I think 25 we can go, and I think that's we would have to take it would be a um, it would have to be. Uh, um, you know, we we need something to change where people are kind of on board. Uh, I I think the thing that would make that us to have lower vols, like the Fed's like, okay, you know, we're kind of, we have our rate rises, but we don't see the need to be more aggressive, you know, some kind of verbiage like that. I think that would help in the short term. Uh, the lowest we got for vol in the last three months, I believe, is around 19 and a half. And, and that was when, remember, we thought inflation was licked. We licked it. We kicked its butt, right? Uh, and the market was betting pretty heavily. I think we were, what, 4,200 SPX. Uh, like, hey, it was all good again. Um, so now we are on our way to trying to get to that point again. Now, we're again, we're not close. We're around 3,900 SPX. But a lot, I mean, we were 3,500, what, two Thursdays ago? <laughs> so um, uh, don't blink. Don't blink in this market. Uh, so as far as like, as far as a vol surface and term structure, I mean, we kind of covered that before we have a normal contango. Anytime I see contango, I expect, uh, the market is looking for lower vol in the short term. And the only thing holding it up, I believe is the, um, is the, 
uh, you know, is the no the Fed talking on November second, and even that even that vol um, has come in a little bit. Uh, I was I was pretty surprised because the last the the straddle for the November 11 cycle and spy was like 20 bucks, um, and now we're trading. Eh, we're getting close to three, right around 390, and that straddle is 18, 17 dollars. So we have lost some. We have lost, yeah, about 17 bucks. We have lost a little straddle juice. Um, volatility actually did. Uh, did drop per strike. So if I look at the Nova 11, because that would hold the election and what the Fed was saying. And if I look at the vol on that strike on the 390s, uh, it, it's running even, right? It was a 2785 yesterday. It's 2799 today. So vol on the weekly cycle. So this is what, you know, I teach my students. You have to, you have to be careful on what vol you look at. So the volatility that's right around these two events is holding relatively stable. Um, as we move up the SPX, VIX, the, the, the index itself goes lower because of how VIX is calculated. Um, and some of those vols are now dropping 30 days and out. Um, but the vols in the very, like I would say, the nine-day VIX area are holding about even in the one week volatility is holding about even. So, you know, a little bit of air has come out of the balloon, but it's not like those vols have just disintegrated and disappeared uh, yet. So I think that's, you know, that's what you have. You, you kind of have, um, it's almost like a big earnings cycle, but the earnings is what the Fed's gonna say in the election and the SPX is the underlying. So that does happen a lot. Um, with these big, you know, because now these macro events have just taken things over. But um, oh, there we go. I was looking good on the crystal ball at the beginning of the shit at the beginning of this morning, but now no longer. I no longer look good. Dang. Yeah, you were you were threatening closer than long though. That's all that counts. You were that's threatening a rare double bullseye, which is is yeah. is very rare in the history of the show. So you were you were encroaching upon such rarefied air. And yes. thankfully, the Vol gods have sought fit to not bestow that upon you. But you know what? <laughs> the show is still young. We shall see. We shall see. Maybe a rally back to my level is in order. We shall find out. Let's get on out to, oh, before we do that, Mr. Matt, sir, obviously, you've been uh, keeping an eye out there on the Vol surface. You mentioned uh, the contango and the evolution therein is something you watch very closely in your models. What is catching your eye out there in the Vol surface this week, sir? Yeah, I, I just think it's strange, and maybe Andrew could help me out on this uh but there's actually backwardation in in the spy uh, sbx you know for the uh, around the uh, election and you know during these earnings and then it comes down and then it kind of flattens out whereas the vix term structure is in 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 contango pretty strong contango i, I don't know i mean I, I i guess i don't get that so much andrew do you have anything for me on that you mean why the well I think you mean so the you're looking at SPX like weekly contango, like the day well, like weeklies and dailies? Yeah, what I'm seeing in 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 the even the you know noble noble eleventh or, or whatever is is twenty eighth, twenty eight IV, and then it goes down to twenty four in regular uh no uh, at the end of the uh, end of no or beginning of D. So it's you know backwardation there. But no, no backwardation at all in the VIX term structure. I just think that's strange. Well, I think it's where the all the forward vols start to catch up. It's so it's to... well, you got like forward vols. So where where VIX is measuring, the future is measuring where um, it's it where it is relative to VIX expiration. So I think the thing with why things look weird is where everything's expiring relative um, when you do all the math on forward vols. So it's all it just depends what part of the curve you're looking at. So if you look at uh, uh, regular VIX, you still have, you know, the the uh, the higher the back month uh, vol. Uh, let me. I got to make sure I get all my my stuff straight. As I um, as you raise the vol in the front, the forward vols look lower uh, when you look at those terms. So you're just kind of catching the front part of the term with that type of volatility, and then everything's going back to the normal contango 
Uh, but you get your normal contango because those vols are now, the terms that they're picking up, the short-term vols are a little lower than back-term vols. So it's just where on the curve you're actually, it's like where the bulge and volatility is relative to all the, the different times. Right. So right. It, it makes sense when you when you stick it all out on a spreadsheet and look at it. Yeah, and if there, and if there are we, and it is a little flatter. And the Nov Dece is a little bit flatter than you might expect given the rest of the, of the shape. But all right, I, I get it. All right, out to the land of the spikes options we go, and like we said, a lot of the crazy in the money paper. And I use crazy in air quotes, listeners. Rolled off the board with October expiration. Still have some on the board waiting for new players to come in and do their deep in the money puts and or calls. Uh, right now, uh, the top, let's just do a top three here, really. We got the Dece 10 calls for number three, because there you go. Number two, we've got the Nov 160 puts. So back to the deep, deep in the money puts. And the number one position in Spike's options right now are the Nov 12 calls. So when we're talking about the uh, the sizable remnant positions out there, it still is in the money, but there's not as many. Obviously, before in October, there were 170 puts and 180 puts and all sorts of fun therein so it'll be interesting to see what new positions populated as we continue to roll forward getting on out to the land of the vix options kind of a light day and a fairly anemic week all things considered out there on the vix options front only one hundred eighty-five thousand contracts on the tape right now so these are back to the kinds of numbers we used to see back in june and july in the quiet period of the summer uh, right now the adv also reflecting that adv back down below six hundred thousand. 598,000, down 64,000 contracts from this time last week. So vol coming in and volume on VIX front there. Just overall VIX volume coming, crashing in as well. Uh, let's get on out to the top position, see what's dominating things out there in VIX options. Cost you 135,000 contracts right now to break into the top 10. That gets you to the D60s. By the way, it is... 10 to 0 calls over puts in the top 10 in VIX right now. Read into that what you will, listeners. A number nine, a buck 55 of the Nova, excuse me, Nova, <laughs> of, of the February 80s. So we're back to these strikes, listeners. Number eight, a buck 57 of the D70s. Number seven, a buck 69 of the Nova 40s. Number six, a buck 76 of the Nova 35 calls. And that's pretty much it for quote unquote reasonable strikes here, listeners. Number five, 203,000 of the March 75s. Number four, 224 of the Jan 70s. Number three, 230,000 of the Nov 70s. Number two, 289,000 of the Nov 60s. And rounding out the top spots in VIX options yet again, 309,000 of the Nov 50 calls. In terms of action this week, like we said, kind of an anemic week. The lone really standout was yesterday. Today, like we said, Kind of a whole lot of nothing hitting the tape today. 185,000 contracts on the tape right now. The top trades, such as they are, 13,000 of the Nob 65s, almost 11,000 of the Nob 40s for number two, 10,000 for number three of the Nob 37 halves, number four, 8,000 of the Dees 38s. And rounding out the top five today, uh, about 8,000 of the Nob 27 puts. Yesterday was the standout so far this week, 604,000 contracts on the tape. Uh, the big dog yesterday, 57,000 of the Nov 37 half calls. That's nice. At least they're somewhat reasonable. It's not Nov 80s or something like that. Number two, 47,000 of the Nov 40s. Number three, 45,000 of the Dece 35s. Number four, 30,000 of the Nov 35s. And before you start saying, well, at least the mostly somewhat relevant calls, then we got number five, 26,000 of the Nov 50s. And even the 50s aren't as as optimistic shall we say as a lot of the other strikes we've seen of late wednesday five hundred twenty two thousand contracts on the tape the big dog on wednesday about twenty nine thousand of the nov 70s as followed by number two twenty seven thousand of the nov 50s number three twenty two thousand of the nov 23 puts number four twenty thousand of the february 17 puts and rounding out the top five on wednesday nineteen thousand of the nov 35 calls Tuesday, a similar amount of paper, 520,000 contracts on the tape. Uh, the big dog on Tuesday, 37,000 of the Nov 65s, followed by number two, about 35,000 of the Nov 25 puts. So maybe a bit of a risk reversal out there. We'll have to dig in and see. Number three, 26,000 of the Nov 85 calls. Number four, 21,000 
of the Nov 60s and rounding out the top five on Tuesday, 21,000 of the Nov 70 calls. And then Monday, another anemic day, 315,000 contracts on the tape. But the big dog on Monday, 31,000 of the Nov 40s, followed by number two, 18,000 of the Nov 35s. Number three, 17,000 of the Nov 60s. Number four, 14,000 of the Nov 30s. And rounding out the top five on a pretty light day, 13,000 of the D's 25 puts. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, not the most rock'em, sock'em robots of weeks out there on the VIX options front. But any paper coming across your radar or catching your eye this week, sir? Well, I, I mean, our, but the favorite paper of the week was still the uh, the June uh, the June 15 puts in VIX or the June uh, 16 puts. Um, I I think I I thought at least myself I didn't think VIX could go down a whole lot this uh, go down a whole bunch this week uh, given um, you know given the fact that we do have this move coming uh, from the Fed and we do have the election. Um, so, you know, we've rallied far enough to drive VIX lower. Um, but I was, I was, I'm surprised that we had, you know, the 20, you know, the move from, let's say what, 29, 29, 30 at the beginning of the week to here. And again, cause we rallied right 3,700, almost 3,900 this week. So, you know, when we rally VIX goes down now, volatility at the strike hasn't gone down very much. So, I mean, I think I think it's not an unreasonable bet that we get back to a what I would call a normal vol regime by uh, June of this year. Uh, there is a hundred thousand open on those uh, June fifteen puts. You can buy you want for eight cents. <laughs> Nobody believes we could get. You know, it's hard to believe that. No one sees that vol could get back to like zone two, which is just remember just half a quartile, half of where, you know, uh, where VIX has lived much of its life. Um, and the 22 puts are dollar 48, 21 puts are 109. So there's not, you know, there's no, again, you're waiting a long time for those to pay. Don't get me wrong. It's not like VIX goes to 22 on Tuesday and those options explode in value. But um, the fact that that kind of paper, there is some, there is some dibbling and dabbling, and you know where those eight cent contracts could be worth a dollar, right? Could easily be worth a dollar by June of next year, and that would be, I would be a pretty, uh, you know, what I would call a lower risk way to, um, to be short volatility for that long period of time. So I, I think that's, that's the volume I saw there. Another thing is, is what I would say still is. In the no cycle for this year, the lack of interest and in how low the vol is in the from like the 26 to the 20 put side, like the 20 puts are four cents. Like they're given no chance basically for vol to go to 20. And and believe me, we would have to change again. Like I said, we'd have to change regime. But you know, there's only there's 3,000 of the 22 puts uh, traded. Uh, the 24 puts are 56 cents, 3,800, very low volume for how, you know, and VIX is a game of when vol can make that move. So it's pretty low volume, I see, for um, how close VIX is at this point. And I think, and that's the problem with what we've had lately, is every time we kind of get to this level, like Matt was saying, we have this, you know, the vol just, just jumps right back up again because, you know, whatever... A, problem rears its ugly head so there isn't that huge demand um for those contracts like we have seen in the past but still like you know the no 26 strangle for a little for a little more than three dollars i find um you know i find that well priced um probably i would guess it's probably a little inexpensive uh the 28 26 for two dollars and 80 cents like it's hard to believe VIX is still relatively high, but normal for this year, kind of average for this year. And those strangles are only like two and a half bucks or two dollars and sixty cents. It's just, you know, the the vol of vol is unbelievably <laughs> low um, for what we're seeing. So that's I'll I'll say that's the you're not you're not seeing that crazy to buy buy demand for VIX, which 
you know, which usually, you know, we don't usually means we don't crash. Um, but uh, that's that's the observation. I mean, I'd be interested to hear what Matt has because I know he's a he's a volume follower on all this stuff. A volume follower, indeed. Speaking of followers, you really love my uh, my June fifteen puts for seven cents. They they inspired you, sir. The heck with that eight cent kind. Seven cents is where the action is, Mister Rock Lobster. <laughs> out there i know mr matt you don't really uh watch a ton of the vix options out there but there are some intriguing developments going on in the world of vol etps let's start with our newest additions good old spkx and spiky spkx of course the plain vanilla if you will version no leverage there at about a 27 and a quarter when we kicked off the show down about three and a quarter points uh, still waiting to kind of light the world on fire out there. It's got about a, a one lot open out there on the option front, but the options did just list a few weeks ago. Uh, Spikey, though, getting a little bit more attention, a little bit more paper out there. Spikey at about 27.75 right now, down about five and a quarter points on the week. Obviously, Spikey is the levered one and a half contract out there and uh, doing some numbers, including looks like a, a nine lot going up today of the Nove 56 calls. So some folks liking. Some 50s looks like they're overriding them though. Again, we're at a 2775. So that's a it's a fear out of the money call. But then again, in these spikes products, we have learned people do like their far out of the money contracts. And then getting on to uh, some of the other recent additions out there, levered, inverse, and the like. Let's start with inverse with SVIX. It was at about a 12 when we kicked off the show. It's up about 1.2 points. Let's see where it's hanging out right now. That's still at about a 12, so not a heck of a lot of evolution out there throughout the course of the show. In terms of paper, like we've been saying for a while, it seems like these these vol products, these vol ETPs really do a lot of paper on the weekly expiration cycle. And that's usually the case. Uh, SFIX today, though, kind of quiet. So only 335 contracts on the tape of uh, the ADV hanging out at around 850. So not a lot of paper out there. Let's see if its friend Uvix can buck the trend out there ubix was at about a 990 when we kicked off the show down nearly two and a half points and it's still hanging out at about a 990 out there in terms of paper ubix the levered one and a half contract listeners has attracted a lot more in the way of options paper as reflected in the adv it's nearly six thousand contracts even though it's down about 600 again this week and once again we are seeing a decent amount of paper here on the Friday as the expiration cycle just drives some action. We're already seeing over 5,000 contracts on the tape in UVIX right now. Let's let's see really quickly what's lighting it up out there today. We have 1,000 of the October expiring today. So then the weeklies, 10 half puts going up. And that's the big print followed by about 500 of the 10 puts also going out today. And then we go out. It's all October expiring today. Like I said, weekly expiration listeners, 300 of the 12 half puts and about 300 as well of the 11 puts. So that's a fair amount of your paper out there is all stuff going out today. In terms of the size positions that are open in UVIX right now, that remains on the DEES front. 2,000 of the DEES 18 puts is your number one position out there, followed by 1,500 for number two of the October 11 puts expiring today. So those obviously going the way of the Dodo, looking pretty good right now. Number three, we've got the 10 half puts also going out today. 1,500 of those are open. Number four, 1,300 of the DEES 11 puts, and number five, 1100 as well of the DS 30 calls. So interesting. Got both extremes there, 11 puts and the 30 calls out there. Uh, Mr. Matt, we've had a lot of new additions to the Vol ETP realm over the course of this past year, including good old SPKX and Spikey. Have you paid attention to any of these? Any of these coming on your radar over there at or at these days, sir? You know, not much, but uh, you know how I like my super far out of the money. Uh, uh, options and they've been holding it. They've been holding uh, pretty well uh, out there. So uh, I'm liking to see. I'm liking uh, these uh, big volumes going in those way out of the money uh, calls. Uh, but you know, I like. I, you know, I, I, again, I think I have a, a few of my clients are. You know, I go visit them and they almost whisper about some of these uh, these contrived e- 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 ETPs and such. Um, and they're making money on it somehow. They, you know, they just read the prospectus and they figure things out. And I just don't want to play in that one. I think I, I have a relative disadvantage. So that's how I feel about those, Mark. You should put your own index there. What do you think? The garbage calls and garbage puts index. What do you think? That'd be kind of interesting. 
I like that. Like, uh, you know, they, they they do hold up. And again, it doesn't have to go there. It just has to, uh, the ball just has to shock a little bit, and then you'll be surprised how much those move. Your garbage VIX calls index and your garbage spy puts. I think people would be into that. That would be kind of fun. There you go. I'm, I'm giving you more homework. You're going to regret coming on the show soon. <laughs> Let's keep on rolling here. We are kind of coming up against it. Uh, UVXY really quickly at about a 10 when we kicked off the show down nearly two points, about 1.8 points. In terms of action, it had done about 157,000 contracts at the start of the show. So a decent amount of paper. Let's see if more has flocked in since then. It's up to about 210,000 contracts. So it's pretty close to the ADV already, which is 237,000 contracts. That has come in substantially since our last show. It's down about 40,000 contracts. In terms of the size positions out there in UBXY right now, it's the 11 calls going out today. I said we're at about a 10, so (laughs) those may not have a good shot. 23,500 of those. Again, if you're overriding them, okay, but as we've seen in the past, a lot of premium buying out here. Number two, we have 19,000 of the Jan 75s. Number three, 16,000 of the October, again, expiring today, 12 puts. Those are looking better right now. Number four, 16,000 of the no 15 calls and rounding out the top five. In positions out there in UBXY, 15,400 of the October expiring today, 13 calls. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, anything catching your eye in the topsy-turvy world of volatility ETPs this week, sir? I mean, I think UVXY moved a little bit this week. That was the, from a, I mean, that, that's kind of the, the first thing. Uh, you know, it's back to $10. So the, the glory days of the UVXY split are just around the corner. Uh, and it's a little more fun. Uh, to trade, but it's it's closing on you know the lows of the year. I think we're about eight bucks for UVXY. So um, I, I think uh, it it does make maybe a potentially interesting trade for uh, how low uh, you know UVXY could go uh, for uh, you know till you know to the November cycle, right? So right before Thanksgiving, after the election, after that. So again, this is. It, it is setting up for a vol cycle with really low vol of vol. The, the vol of vol in UVXY I'm noticing also is about as low as I can remember it. Um, I'm trying to get a, I believe we are at lows of the year. So normally when we are looking at volatility in a volatility product, and we are in the top quartile of volatility, the last thing you would expect would be that the volatility of the options would be the low of the year. And it is far and away the lowest of the year by, if you look at a chart of a vol of vol, it is, it is at zero, <laughs> um, making new lows everywhere. So all of those things, when I see them, uh, you know, you, you want to be contrarian, right? And say, hey, uh, I definitely want to, you know, buy that vol, which I totally get. Or, you know, that's got to be the bottom and things are going to turn around. Certainly could happen. But, uh, again, I would say that those low vols are are not indicative of, you know, a market for volatility wanting to go back up. Now, every time vol of vol is low, it goes back up at some point, right? So just so everybody knows that. But the fact that it's making such an aggressive low before this big event, I it has me shaking my head a little bit. So I think, of course, you want to own it. You kind of want to own strangles and stuff like that because the fact that we could see like a 20 volatility, um, it's possible. Uh, I'm not going to say it happens, but you – with vol of all so low, you can still catch that ride um, and own upside and, you know, make some decent money on that as a trade. So it's just the opportunities here. You don't really get such a low number um, into an expected event. So I, the, the, the funkiness of the pricing, um, I mean, again, it's reflecting what's going on. And it's possibly being reflected in, again, the liquidity provider doesn't feel the need to keep the bid up. So as as Matt remembers and as you remember, you're going to keep the bid for vol up there until somebody starts selling it back to you. So 
somebody somewhere is selling something to the liquidity provider to push all these vol contracts in the short term so low. Um, don't know who it is, <laughs> but it it has to be some kind of substantial dough um, knocking the vol down. Let's see if we can keep knocking that vol down as we head on into the crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the crystal ball. All right, everybody, welcome to the crystal ball, the portion of the show where we get dangerous here, try to predict what the vol gods hold in store. Last week, I was at about a 30 and a quarter, just north, just north of the 30 hand. Obviously, we're not hanging out there. Mr. Rock Lobster was feeling a 27 and a quarter. And uh, the VIX gods are fickle. VIX coming in about a 26.10 right now. I will say, if you have a shining light in your favor, Mr. Rock Lobster, it is the extra bit of juice in SPY from the dividend that keeps spikes a little bit elevated this time of year, sir, because spikes is closing in on a 27.40. So you're still outside of our tenth of a point frame of reference, but you're closer on spikes. So I will give it to you there. Uh, but alas, uh, you keep, no, no double bullseye for the Rock Lops. Even though close, again, thank the dividend gods, sir, for keeping, yes. you, keeping you within striking distance this week. Look at our listeners really quickly. Looks like our closest was, we had a bunch of people with 30 handles this week. Yeah, I was feeling that too, so I can't fault you. It looks like the closest was Z2313. That's a mouthful. Great handle. I like it. <laughs> it rolls off the tongue. Uh, 2829. So again, unfortunately, outside of our tenth of a point there as well. I'm looking really quickly. Yeah, I don't see anything else. 29 and a half. Frank was the only other one that was even below 30 at 29 and a half. Uh, so yeah, if our producers find any others and all the people who sent in their uh, guesses, they'll hit me up and let me know. But for now, I don't see any. That means we have a clear slate. That means Mr. Matt as our guest. You did. Last time you were on, I do believe you had a bullseye. So you are still basking in that reflected glow. So I will allow you the dubious honor of going first, sir. What are you feeling for this time next week from a ball perspective? I'm going to get pretty aggressive. I think ball's coming in. I'm going to go 24.98. Oh, interesting. Another strike that would have looked good for me, like, let's say, a week ago or two. <laughs> let's go out to uh, Mr. Andrew. Since you were closer than me this week, I'll let you choose. You want to go next or last? I will, I will go next to give you a chance to scum me, but I will still win. How generous are you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like, Mark, I like uh, Matt's number, but I'm going to go one full handle below and go 23.98. Dang. You really want yeah, those? We're going those... to we're going to be out of zone four after this bet. I'm going. I'm going to go all. You want that. those VIX puts to to hit a ten cent bid? That's what you want. Uh, those June puts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry. What did you say? Twenty three ninety eight. Is that what you said? Twenty three ninety eight. Wow. Wow. All right, listeners. We already got some fire going here. Twenty four. I thought twenty four ninety eight was interesting. Twenty three ninety eight. Wow. All right. So we got a lot of downside living to do here, listeners. Will that continue? We're shucking off all the earnings juice it seems like we were putting into this market. So who knows what's going on out there? So I'm going to say, see, we're at about a 26 and change right now, 27 and change in spikes out here right now. Ugh. I'm going to say a little bit north of where we are right now. I'm going to say 26.56. All right, that music means we have come to the end of another epic sojourn through the world of volatility. Mr. Matt, thank you for joining us here in the heart of earnings season to break down some earnings fun, earnings volatility. If folks want to learn more, they want to check out that sweet new dashboard you got cooking over there in the land of ORATS, where should they go? What should they do, sir? Yeah, come on over to ORATS.com. We have uh, the dashboard product that has analysis tools, a signal builder, uh, one minute volatility is coming through. You could pair those and get signals and alerts. It's really fun. I use it uh, in my slinging. Uh, but yeah, orats.com. And of course, we have the data and, and everything like that. So uh, you know, you'll be seeing the hats too. I mean, that's the big thing. The hats. The hats. Are, I can't wait to do these hats now. I'm going to have to put aside one for me. The rest will go out to our pro listeners. And of course, one for the Umbridge King, the Rock Lobster. <laughs> Mr. Umbridge King, sir, if folks want to check out what you got cooking in the land of the pit, where should they go? What should they do? Uh, optionpit.com, 888-TRADE-01. 
Uh, my spy master, you want to learn trade Vixen Spy. Check it out. Doing very well. Uh, and of course, you need to have one of your guests provide me with a hat. You couldn't do it yourself. You have to, you have to bring a guy from New Hampshire, and, and the Orats guy, to provide me with a hat. I'm just saying, just for the listeners. Oh, I don't want oh, you hearing about our pro members getting some sweet swag from Orats, and then you getting more umbrage on me. So I'm waiting till the hats come, and then we can put together the full umbrage box. For the rock lobster. And I want you, oh, I hear there's hats too. And then I got to ship another box to you. It's a huge pain. So let's just make it all one box and make life easier. And then we, in the meantime, listeners, you want to get a dose of his umbrage in between appearances on this show. Optionpit.com is the place to go. And you know where to go to learn more about all things spikes. Myaxoptions.com slash spikes. And of course, if you want your week to continue after Vol Views, then of course, head on over to theoptionsinsider.com slash pro that's the place to go to learn more get in on all the on-demand action get live access to this everything else we do great pro q a's if you're one of our newer listeners you're signing up now for the first time of course you'll get access to all the great stuff we've done on that exclusive pro podcast feed it's got a lot of great stuff i was looking through it the other day there's already a lot of great stuff on that feed including we went over to uh, the Harvard Yard virtually recently and did a nice session with uh, the harvard business school alumni talking about options that's all there for you folks to check out as well save you the entrance fee there get on over to the options insider.com slash pro again for all you on-demand folks that will conclude your broadcast week thank you for joining us for the rest of you pro folks hang out for a little bit i will be back with the umbrage king to break down a mad week of unusual activity then back again next week all the way through to friday another episode of volatility views stay safe out there everybody Volatility Views is brought to you by MyAx, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. MyAx is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra-low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.